He farted so hard he blew the roof right off the house. Can you see? Here? Once the roof had been put back and he made everyone feel better, Dr. Dog felt sick, sick himself. You're suffering from stress, Dog, said his doctor. What you need is a holiday away from that pesky family. So Dr. Dog goes to see his own doctor when he feels unwell. I wonder how many of you do that here. Just what the doctor ordered, said Dr. Dog. They'll never find me here. So Dr. Dog even listens to what his doctor tells him to do. He's a good dog. <laughs> oh no, said Dr. Dog. <laughs> they always find us, don't they? <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed hearing about Dr. Dog. For me, then, it's more than just a children's story. It's a great example of how it's possible to find wisdom even in the most simple of places. The story reminds me that in times of change or uncertainty, it's good to come back to what is well known and familiar. Working in family medicine can be wonderful and a rewarding job, but I'm sure that some days everyone here might feel like this. From patients, from other members of the team, or from the government. So the question is, how can you turn days like this into days like this? Much better. In the work I've been doing in medical education in Australia, I've had a particular interest in burnout prevention. And I've developed this model to try and help with teaching about staying well in a work in health, in health. The inside the circle are those factors which represent the inner world of an individual, the mind, the body and the spirit. Outside the circle are external factors which can have an impact on an individual's well-being. When I'm feeling unhappy or stressed, I try to think about these six factors. And usually, one of them is out of balance. If I, if I, fi I find it that if I'm able to pay attention to the factor that's out of balance, it gives me the power to make some change, to help me feel better. And it stops me from doing what I would otherwise do, which is to blame other people for my problems. It allows me to take responsibility for my own well-being. I'll now speak a little bit more about how this model can be used to help each of us when facing big changes in our life. As you'll see, there's a lot of overlap between the six factors, and in some sense the model is quite artificial. But it does give each of us the power, if we use this, to think about how we can make changes ourselves and stop blaming other people for how we feel. So firstly, to a healthy environment. When I started working at Lennox Head Medical Centre about 10 years ago, the room was set up so the patients had a beautiful view out the window to the, to the hill where there's cows and donkeys. And the way the doctor's chair was facing, my chair, was to sit and look at the wall. I didn't think this was very good, so the first thing I did when I started working there was to move the furniture so that I looked out the window and saw the skies and the hills. We spend so much of our time at work it's important to try to make the environment at work as good as possible. It can be easy, but you need to think about it. Similarly, at home, after a busy day at work, if I'm feeling tired or a little bit grumpy, a bit cross, I like to go in the garden. We grow some of our food, as you can see here, some chilies, limes. And I find that working in the garden is a very good way to connect me with the environment and help me to feel better. 
What about activities? Dr. Dog was a good example of having activities in his work that he enjoyed to keep him satisfied and happy. Also, outside of work, activities are important, especially activities that take us out of our thinking mind and quieten our thinking a little bit. I play football. I know that's very surprising for someone so old like me, but I enjoy it very much because it certainly takes me out of my mind. And also I've been learning guitar, which is another nice way to get quiet. My wife, Sharon, who teaches children with special needs, makes these ceramic birds. And here is a photo of some of her famous birds. Relationships are also important, especially at times of change and stress. And they're the times when our relationships can be very important, but times when we may not pay enough attention to them. These photos were taken on the sunset on my 50th year of life, of, of just be before I turned 50, when we were travelling in France in 2008. And it's just to remind us that the importance of relationships when things are difficult, family relationships can be very helpful. Some, some relationships can be not so good for our health. There are times at work when I was working with people that was so difficult that I had to change my work. This is not always possible. So we need strategies to help us to manage relationships and people that we might not particularly like. One such strategy which I find helpful is that I, with, if I'm with someone who I don't particularly like or get along with, is to look them in the eye. There's a saying in English that the eye is the window to the soul. And I find if I'm able to do that, it helps me to maintain relationships with people that I find a little difficult. It's well known that physical activities are beneficial for health, but one needs to be careful about choosing physical activities because some of them can also be dangerous, like on my last summer holiday. Uh, so physical activities are very important for good health also. 